You look at our computing power today, and you say, I have the power to program a world inside of a computer. Well, imagine in the future where you have even more power than that. And you can create characters that have, for example, free will. And I program in the laws that govern that world. Now, you're a character in that world, and you think you have free will. And you say, I want to invent a computer. So you do. Hey, I want to create a world in my computer. In 2003, Oxford University professor Nick Bostrom published Are You Living in a Simulation? It's an argument stating that there's a high likelihood that we are all pieces of code created in a computer simulation. Strom's theory isn't the first that humans live on a hard drive somewhere on a great cosmic computer, but it did popularise the idea by putting it in a way that appeals to scientists. Physicists are particularly drawn to the theory, and they continue to discuss it nearly 15 years later. I know there will be sceptics about this theory, but with these premises, you might just find yourself believing what I'm about to tell you, that we might be living inside of a simulated computer, a computer-generated reality. Logic number one. We are living in a pixelated reality. Pictures and videos are made up of pixels. No matter how high the resolution of an image, it will still blur as you zoom in further. In the real world, we can zoom down to see viruses and bacteria, then to the levels of atoms, quarks and superstrings, which are the bits and pieces that make up the whole pictures, or our reality. Logic number two. We exist as information. We know energy and matter from Einstein's equation, but what we don't realise is that matter and energy are all secondary aspects of reality. They're simply a manifestation of the most fundamental of all. Information. Everything around us is information. Atoms and molecules are information. Your beliefs and religions are also information. The buildings we see around us are physical representations of their blueprints. Electromagnetic waves are forms of information too, accepting the fact that our reality is informational. So, it will be computable and programmable. We seem to see a pattern forming over here. Our universe and reality are pixelated, so they are comparable to a computer program. Logic number three, non-stop innovation. When you see the advancement of something like video games 40 years ago, the most advanced video game would be Pong, where you had like two rectangles and a dot battling back and forth. That was a pretty advanced game at the time. But now you can see a video, an almost photorealistic game, and millions of people playing simultaneously. You can scan and see where things are going, and virtual reality and augmented reality exist. If you extrapolate the future with any rate of progress, say even 1% or something like that, eventually those games will be indistinguishable from reality. They will become so realistic that you'll not be able to see the difference between the game and reality as we know it. Well, how do we know that those things didn't already happen in the past? Reasons to believe that the universe is a simulation include the fact that it behaves mathematically and is broken up into pieces. These are called subatomic particles. Like a pixelated video game, even things that we think of as continuous, which are time, energy, volume and space, all have a finite limit to their size. If that's the case, then our universe is both computable and programmable. Logic number four. Consciousness might be programmed. The meaning of consciousness is the state of being awake and aware of one's surroundings. I want to give you an analogy. This car has an alarm, and if a thief is trying to get inside, well, this car might alarm itself. It means that this car is conscious. And this car has a thermostat. It will notify you when it encounters a problem in your engine. Remember that now we have self-driving cars. It means that the level of consciousness in our technology today is continuously rising exponentially. Almost everything now is automated. Your mobile phone, social media accounts, online notifications, 
Well, your phone rings and it vibrates if someone sends you a message. The basic formula of consciousness is observance plus feelings is equal to consciousness, is equal to experience, is equal to knowledge, is equal to information, and that is equal to reality. That's why our reality is based on information. If one progresses at the current rate of technology, a few decades into the future, very quickly, we will be a society where artificial entities are living in simulations that are much more abundant than humans. Logic number five. Our reality and nature are full of patterns. The universe is governed by the golden ratio that keeps everything in order. Space-time itself is defined by this mathematical constant. The ratio is found across nature, plants, hurricanes, galaxies, even in your blood and fingerprints, and more. This golden ratio can be programmed using the mathematical sequence, using Fibonacci numbers. It's a series of numbers in which each number is the sum of the two preceding numbers, just like this. Logic number six. People see ghosts and unusual things. Have you ever thought, what if these ghosts are just a glitch on a computer? A glitch is a sudden and usually temporary malfunction or irregularity in the equipment. It's a small problem, but it does prevent it from being successful or working as well. Logic number seven. The universe is made of math, including you. Here is one of my favourite quotes from one of my most liked Greek philosophers, Pythagoras. He quotes, Geometry is knowledge of the eternally existent. Pythagoras appears to have believed that numbers are the ruler of all forms, creation and ideas. He says numbers are within all things, which I also believe. All matter is made up of particles which have properties such as charge and spin. But these properties are purely mathematical. Space and time complexity matters. Actually, I'm not the only one who believes this. Rich Terrell, from NASA Jet Propulsion Laboratory, California Institute of Technology, says, Look at the way the universe behaves. It's quantized. It's made of pixels. Space is quantized. Matter is quantized. Energy is quantized. Everything is made of individual pixels, which means the universe has a finite number of components, which means a finite number of states, which means it's a computer. Galileo Galilei says mathematics is the language in which the creator has written the universe. Logic number eight, artificial intelligence. Scientists have used artificial intelligence to create complex, three-dimensional simulations of the universe. It's called the Deep Density Displacement Model, or D3M, and it's so fast and so accurate that the astrophysicists who designed it don't even know how it does what it does. What it does is accurately simulate the way gravity shapes the universe over billions of years. Each simulation takes just 30 milliseconds compared to the minutes it takes older simulations. And even more fascinatingly, D3M learnt from the 8,000 training simulations the team fed it, vastly extrapolating from and outperforming them, able to adjust parameters in which it had not even been trained. It's like teaching image recognition software with lots of pictures of cats and dogs, but then it's able to recognise elephants, said astrophysicist Shirley Ho of the Flatiron Institute and Carnegie Mellon University. She quotes, Nobody knows how it does this, and it's a great mystery to be solved. Observations of the universe around us can supply a lot of information about its evolution, but there are limits to what we can see. This is why simulations can be so handy. By running simulations that produce results that match our observations, as well as simulations that don't, scientists can figure out the scenarios most likely to have produced the universe that we live in. Logic number nine. We are now adapting the decentralization. Decentralization means freedom, 
And if we are living inside of a computer simulation, you might ask yourself, how does the creator program us to think independently? Well, my answer to this is, maybe he used the concepts of decentralization. He gave us information, knowledge, intelligence and data and developed that information or knowledge based on our experience for us to think for ourselves. Because a great creator or a great leader will not create followers, he just creates more leaders. A good creator or teacher doesn't say you should do this or you should do this or that. Instead, he gives you information and a transfer of knowledge to you so that you can be informed and get more informed and then have the freedom to make your own decisions. If it's inspired you in some way, you should know what you're doing and make that decision for yourself. This way you feel adequately informed. It depends on what level of experience, background, practice and what level of conviction you have. If someone programmed us that we must do this or we should do this, then we become servants and slaves and I don't think a great leader or creator would do that. As I said a while ago, decentralization means freedom. It's a freedom to think independently and having control in all circumstances. We have now the decentralized money, like cryptocurrency, decentralized social media, like Steemit, and a decentralized exchange like BitShares and more. It means that we humans have the power and control in our necessity. We have the knowledge to plant our own foods. We have information on how to preserve, protect and keep our mother nature. And we are continuously improving all of the information that is given to us. Therefore, if we're living in a computer simulation and we have all this information to create a reality and continuously improve and develop that information using our own experience, I think soon you're going to ask me who will be the next creator of this virtual reality? For me? Our future selves. Because if we are in a computer simulation right now, I just want to give thanks to the creator for programming and giving us all of this information, all of this knowledge, this consciousness, and especially intuition. Because having freedom is having the power to continue, endure, develop, or even start a new beginning. Well, maybe we're in a simulation right now. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah, seriously. If you have enjoyed this video and you're inspired by what you've seen, don't forget to like, subscribe and share. Let's change the world together.